The side of my house was filled up. The sea can was filled up. I still needed more space. I moved into a larger warehouse. This is the current shop where I'm at. Hey everyone, welcome to... Welcome to The Rental Guy. Uh, this is the channel where I share my personal experiences on how to start and grow an event rental business. This is the current shop where I'm at. I started with nothing and I moved my way up and I wanna share uh, the tactics that I use and then you can also use my over 500 videos for reference. I'll be able to help you if you're starting a rental business and you need a little bit of insight, some real insight. So when I started out, in April 2019, this is where I started out. This is my headquarters. Uh, this is the garage. Uh, the customers would drive down the alley and they would come pick up from me. I would load and unload my orders here. Uh, I had eight round tables, 20 plastic folding tables, which I bought off of Facebook Marketplace, 150 brown folding chairs that I bought for $5 each, seven Walmart style pop-ups by the end of the season, but I reinvested more every time I took a booking. Who says you can't do multiple pickups in a minivan? We've got a heat lamp in there, a bunch of tables, some chairs. I didn't have any software. I used free software to take my payments. It was called Wave. So I'm just gonna click in new invoice. So now I'm just entering the invoice due date. After that, I enter the contact information. So you'll notice on the green tab, you can just toggle debit and credit card payments that will be included with the invoice. So now I add the items to the invoice. So now I'm just gonna press save to save the invoice and send to send the invoice to the client. So here is my invoice link uh, inside the email ready to send to the client. All I have to do is uh, type out the message to them. It was great because I could take credit card payments through it. Uh, so I could keep someone's credit card on file in case of damages because you don't want to charge someone a damage deposit because they don't they want to shell out the least amount of money as possible when they're small. So um, Wave Accounting was great for that. Um, I could track all of my inventory when I was in here because I had like three orders a week going out. It was very small. I had to balance my inventory just on paper. Here, I know that this is for Thursday, August 27th. So I've got all my uh, gigs in order so I can check what I have booked out to make sure I have the items available. Uh, most people use Excel, Excel spreadsheets. I was using paper at the time. I built my website off of a free website drag and drop a builder called Weebly and I still use that to date to make my website and it works great. Uh, I'm at the top of my rankings in my city. I dominate the SEO through a simple drag and drop editor. I was sick of taking phone calls. People, you know, would see my website and they would call me and they'd be like, hey, do you have this? And I would be like, no, because I didn't have much inventory. So I quickly changed my website uh, to make a form with all the things that I had and they could just select from that form. I use Zoho so it's like uh, you can see see pictures of, uh, of things and then you just click what you want. So, and then you uh, enter your information and send it. So I would email them back with the payment request. They would pay and the booking would be done. We would email them the, uh, you know, the times that they could come pick up. Uh, one of the reasons that I even progressed into the next stage uh, was due to advertising crazy low uh, price rental packages of pop-up tents, tables, and chairs. So when I was in here, um, rather than just having single things and having people pick through them, uh, putting things in packages was the way to go. So it was, you know, what do people like to order? Well, they usually order tents, tables, and chairs so I made pop-up tent table and chair packages uh, for great low prices and people jumped on that and I was able to uh, get my inventory moving right it would be hard to get the single things moving but when they're, they're in a package it seems to make sense for people if the price seems right uh, it's the great way to move stuff I still move stuff in packages all the time what did I advertise on? I used uh, Facebook Marketplace I used uh, Kijiji which is like Craigslist um, yeah those were great I basically reinvested every penny that I made right back into the business quickly, bought as much inventory, uh, used inventory to start out. So I was always scanning Facebook Marketplace to find some, uh, you know, folding tables. Uh, and my inventory wasn't the best, but I was renting it out cheap and people didn't care. And also during the first rental season, I quickly realized that having these types of items, pop-up tents, tables, and chairs, weren't the type of items that people would be pre-booking. So uh, the off-season was slow and nothing was going on. 
on. So I had to re-fix my strategy and rethink things because pop-up tents, tables, and chairs is something that people will book on a whim. They'll book uh, a week prior, two weeks prior, but nothing uh, further than that unless they're crazy people. So keeping that in mind that people aren't making pre-bookings for tents, tables, and chairs of the pop-up variety for small bookings, I came up with my off-season plan. Uh, season one, I made $15,000 and I thought I was the king of the world. I was so proud. Uh, little did I know later on in life that I would make, you know, $15,000 in uh, a booking. A good booking, of course. So I started strategizing my off-season plan pretty much at the point when I first started uh, my YouTube channel. And that's where you can start seeing my videos. Um, I knew for the next busy summer season, which would be season two, I had to progress into the next stage of my rental business. I figured out that people book in advance for their upcoming weddings. So people were requesting uh, white chairs uh, for their wedding ceremonies. So what I knew is that white chairs would rent. So I went out and I bought some fan back chairs. And then I claimed I owned a lot more than I actually owned. And people would pre-book them because I had such a crazy price. And, you know, I called it, you know, a limited time deal. And I had those chairs booked out all summer in advance. It made me money to float by through the winter, but also buy more chairs and add more chairs to my website. And then this realized that I could not have to own everything that I'm trying to sell because it's dead and people pre-book certain items. So this got my head scratching, you know, what are other items that people pre-book? And this strategy worked at this size because the bigger companies wouldn't compete with the low prices I was offering as it would devalue their products, right? To the point where it wouldn't make sense for them to actually try to compete with me um, you know, cause they have all the overhead, they have the warehouse and they have the employees. I had none of this stuff. All I had to do, uh, they had, they had gas and they had labor and all those other associated costs. Um, I had my garage and to store my rentals in my minivan. And it's way easier on gas in my minivan, uh, than it is for their moving trucks. Plus they didn't really have to worry about me because I ran out of inventory in two seconds, right? And so once I was out, then who would be the next call? It would be them anyway. So they would just score up all that inventory because I would always run out of everything. So uh, my low prices got me into this industry and uh, that was great because if I had high prices, why wouldn't they just go to the competition? So I'm not gonna show too much of uh, the garage besides it's a little bit of a mess because I've been working on the van more so, but uh, uh, I mean, you get the gist. The funny thing is that uh, people booked me solid. I was taking deposits left and right for weddings using products that I didn't even own yet. Uh, and I kept uh, increasing the amount of chairs and I ended up buying them using money from the deposits. Uh, by the end of the second season, I'd built up an inventory of almost 200 white fan back folding chairs that I rented out for about $2.50 a piece, almost $1 less than my competitors at the time. So in my preparation for year two as a rental company, uh, for context, I was still out of my garage, this garage right here. I had my minivan that I still have there. I still use it as a runner. It's more of a staff runner. So I had a four by 10 trailer that I hooked to the back of, on a canopy pole tent. So a 20 by 30 canopy pole tent on Kijiji for $500. And I bought that, I cleaned it up cause it was dirty and I had to patch it. I booked that thing out every week. People were pre-booking it. Uh, I purchased a used 20 by 20 pool tent that was uh, taking me bookings. Uh, everything was going good. I added tents, I added more tables, I added chairs, uh, most of which that I bought used. Um, then I hired a part-time guy to help me uh, fulfill those tent setups. Uh, keeping a sharp eye on auctions and Facebook marketplace finds. Uh, my garage was getting full at this point. Uh, I needed some more room and I wasn't yet making enough money to get a space, but I massively needed something because it was filling up uh, to the point where I needed something where I could store more rentals or at least uh, facilitate returns uh, to keep this separate from the core rentals to stay organized. Uh, so I rented a shipping container and I put it right in there, the shipping container, uh, container uh, so that I could do customer returns and I could process orders. There just wasn't enough room in the garage. This is my trailer that I do deliveries, and this is my bay. Uh, customers literally do a 24 hour drop off here. Uh, that costed me about $150 a month to put a uh, storage container in there in my back alley 
Uh, this was the first bit of overhead that my company actually had 150 bucks a month for uh, a storage container which was great because customers could drop off when i wasn't there so summer season two in my garage i hired two very part-time guys to help me fulfill tent orders i literally gave them under 20 hours a week i just had them come in when it was time to set up things i did everything else myself because i wanted all the money so that i could just pour it right back into more rentals because that's the way to compound money and that's the way to grow it's just one step at a time one step at a time and that's the way i was doing it summer hit then i realized my first new set of hurdles going into my second season uh the phone was ringing off the hook and i didn't have the time to take phone calls because i was doing almost all the labor myself um and i was doing the office work myself as well um they seem to happen at the same time as well you know the when i'm trying to get things done that's when the phone started ringing uh, so, and i had a massive inventory problem i hadn't bought enough inventory yet so when i did take these phone calls nine times out of ten um, I didn't have enough money or inventory to fulfill new orders. So the whole second season, I didn't place many orders on top of the ones that I already booked in the off season due to not having any rentals left for prime dates. So yes, pre-bookings worked great, but it booked all my stuff out and the phone was ringing and I wasn't able to fulfill orders, which was a problem. But what can you do, right? You only have so much money coming in and you can only buy so much. So I also had a problem here is when people did call and they wanted to switch something around, I had to go back and I had to refer to the invoices and the sheets of paper where I had everything written down, take things off. It was a big mess. So I basically had to get a program. At this point, I jumped quickly into the first software um, that integrated with my website provider. And that program was called Bookable. And I'm still with Bookable today because Bookable is amazing and they do everything that I want them to do and they help my business run uh, partially on autopilot, um, taking big orders and small orders. So I'm very happy. It was my knight in shining armor. Let me show you my website. I made little buttons and banners on my website that say stuff like, oh, booking rentals has never been this easy before. Uh, basically telling the customers like, oh, don't be scared of the online store it's actually better not to mention they track inventory you never have to track inventory again all summer long i had to track inventory look at all these sheets this is every week that i track during the summer in order so this is what went out through my weeks all summer so this right here is 16 weeks worth of tracking inventory fun stuff so right here is a quick look at my website. You'll see me going through the store. Then I just quickly select something. Uh, you select your date and then you press book. Uh, I require a 25% deposit down in order to place the booking, which you can set within the program. And then you're off to the races. And then it will automatically send an automated email to the person booking saying, hey, you're booked in. This is where you pick up and uh, have a nice day. If you have any problems, questions, or concerns, please reach out to us with my contact information. Super simple. So, and one other huge thing is, is the credit card's already stored on file as soon as they pay. And before they pay, you can make it so that they have to sign a contract to agree to additional charges if the rentals are brought back broken, blah, 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 blah. It's awesome. And blah, 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 it's awesome. Super simple. And then my phone just goes, ding, <laughs> and a booking's in. I could almost list all of the products that I had with pictures and I could put an add to cart button in there with it. Uh, it's like Amazon, but for rentals with the customers. So that was great. And since all my items were booked out already, since it showed uh, the cart availability for any given date, it gave the urgency for clients. So as soon as I integrated this, you know, people, I had a low amount of inventory. So when they visited the website and they saw, oh my gosh, there's only three of those left, it made them book. Like people have that in their brain that, uh, if there's a sense of urgency for something, they're definitely going to jump on it quicker. There's been studies done on this stuff. So during season two, regarding the sheer amount of phone calls that were also coming in, uh, during the busy season, the only way that I could handle doing the office labor work uh, simultaneously is by answering the calls from the customers while setting up the tents. So once I got bookable, uh, it was great because 
uh, people were on the website, they were placing online orders, but I didn't have it fully, you know, they, they had a lot of questions, right? So when they called, I was able to help them place an order instantly online. Well, I had a tent pole in my hand. So I spent the whole season there being the office person simultaneously while lifting up tents. It was uh, an interesting way. And, you know, I look back on it and I'm like, holy crap, that's embarrassing. But it's not embarrassing. It's only embarrassing for corporate clients who, you know, don't want to jump through any hoops. They want everything done for you if it's just someone booking as long as it's a good price they're gonna do it at that point the orders were coming in because I had made processes easier with booking uh, I ended up buying another tent halfway through the season a 20 by 40 pole tent so I had a 20 by 20 20 by 30 and 20 by 40 pole tent at this time that I was making more money on so things started compounding uh, for context a uh, 20 by 40 tent can do about 100 guests where the 20 by 20 and 20 by 30 tents so is doing limited me to 50 or less for event sizes. So once I got that 20 by 40 tent, well then uh, my customer also increased that so that I could do bigger parties. So the bigger the tent that you get, the more parties that you can do, the more inventory goes out. Um, and this is how you build. So season two, I made $77,000. So now at this point, season two is over and it's time to start strategizing the off season uh, for my plan for my busy summer three season. So my off season plan while in the garage prior to season three in my rental company, I know I needed more tents and it sucked that I had pole tents because it was limiting my size of events because you can't butt pole tents up side by side because they need the straps that go out the side. But if you have marquee tents, well that changes everything. So I knew the logical move was to add high peak frame tents to my inventory. Uh, the reason that high peak frame tents were key at the time is because they could be used as a small tent by itself, but then they could be joined together to make larger tents uh, by putting them side to side to get larger bookings or smaller bookings. So whatever comes in, but pole tents was great before because I couldn't afford marquees and you need more people to set up marquee high peak frame tents. So pole tents I could execute by myself and I could do small parties, but um, marquee tents is the way to go. So I used the same strategy. I added some bigger tents and started receiving bigger orders. And I was finally into the sizes of tents that were making some, uh, you know, real company forming money. For context, it said on my website that I had two 20 by 30 marquees. Now two 20 by 30 tents can be arranged to make different sizes. I quickly made enough money to buy these tents before the season even started. So in the off season, I just added up the marquee tents to my website. And from all the bookings, same strategy that I used the season before with the uh, white chairs. So I just took deposits in and then I was able to buy the marquee tents uh, before I even owned them. Uh, so this whole time I'd been constantly buying more tables, more chairs off of Facebook, uh, but I was getting sick of buying half junky stuff. Uh, so I started buying more rental quality stuff at this point. I got some dance floor, I got some resin chairs, and I got things to make uh, the tent packages actually look nice and people to want to have them for their weddings. So when I got into the marquee tents, it was more of a wedding crowd rather than a backyard party crowd. So at this point, I had to figure what was my next best move. Um, you know, I knew I needed a vehicle and I knew I needed a warehouse. Which one was more important? Well. It was the vehicle, the vehicle trumped it. I thought, man, I could just, you know, push into more nooks and crannies, but I needed a vehicle. So basically delivery would suffer if I had to make a, a new trip for every order, right? If I just kept filling up the minivan and I really couldn't load much in there, right? With the small trailer. Uh, so I bought the 16 foot van and the five by eight uh, trailer, an enclosed trailer. So now I could load two trailers. I could preload my stuff and uh, do more gigs. So it was great that I bought a vehicle and I was doing two loads, not with just the minivan, but the minivan and then the 15 uh, passenger van. But towards the end of the season, I was just busting at the seams everywhere. The garage was filled up, the side of my house was filled up, the sea can was filled up, uh, my backyard, I was storing barrels in there. I just, I had no room to even uh, move. My whole basement was filled up with them. I had clearly left it too long, so I knew it was time to consolidate. So I went and got uh, a storage bay to put on top. So even after packing stuff into every nook and cranny that my garage, the side of my house, my basement, everything my house had to offer me, it overtook everything. I still needed more space. So that brings me here about three blocks away from the garage of my house. Uh, I got a storage bay there. 
That way I could load up tents um, and things that could go out on delivery. So pickups were still happening at my garage. Oh, look, a booking just came in instantly online. Anyways, I was doing tents at this point. I had uh, pole tents and pop-up tents, but people weren't picking those up. Those were going out on delivers, uh, deliveries, especially the pole tents. Uh, so, and I had just recently gotten marquee tents, so I stored them all in there. That way, uh, the team, we could load up the deliveries to go out there, but then the pickups would still happen at the garage. So I was maximizing uh, the space, utilizing them for what their good purposes were. And then I could still continue to buy inventory because it could just go in there. Um, but I was clearly busting at the seams. At this point, most companies charge a lot for delivery, not me. You know, I still charge the mileage, but it was well under my competition. And so at this point I was like, well, you know what, if I'm $1,500 cheaper uh, than my competitors, I'm for sure gonna stay booked. Um, therefore, I could score up all those bookings and make sure that my tents are moving. Okay, just so you know, fast forward to right now, this is present day. Uh, that is not a strategy that works for me right now because um, out of town ties up your laborers quite a bit and it's expensive to have people go out of town. If, um, if they have to spend half the day traveling, well then you're gonna have to pay them overtime to do the job. But when it's within two hours away um, and it's using up all your tents, it's a great way to actually get there because if your overheads are smaller than the other company, well then um, you're making probably the same amount anyways if you're just cutting the, uh, the labor that they would have to pay. So you're making the same profits as the big company, but you're ensuring that your tents go out. So that's kind of the methodology behind it. You know, I was stringing to, uh, 20 by 30s together so I could put three of them together, make a 30 by 60 tent, um, rather than, you know, facing the fear of them not going out, right? And then that's how I can make sure that the funds are steadily rolling in, um, you know, as long as I was maxed out. And I was, because I was cheaper, and it was good. So for the short time that I was here, the space worked wonderfully as an offsite, grab my tents, be able to expand my inventory uh, without having to leave things out on my front lawn because uh, I had no space for rentals. So it was time to consolidate. So I moved in right here. Remember this place? This was uh, my first warehouse space. So moving into my warehouse, I actually made it quite easy. So uh, all, the all the rentals that went out from my garage from one busy weekend, I had them return back to here. So it's like, hey, uh, basically everything was rented out. A good, on a good busy season, when you're first starting out, if you have all the right products, everything will be rented out. Uh, if you've done good enough advertising, tents, tables, chairs, basically those are the items you want to start with. And that's kind of what I had before the move, majority of that anyways. And so basically all the tents, tables, and chairs were out. Uh, the shelves were bare in the garage. So all I had to do was dismantle the shelves in the garage and then bring them over here. Uh, they started out uh, right over here. And then I've since kind of moved all the old shelving that I had from the garage back into uh, this tent area here now. So... It's now called Phantom Autoglass. I actually moved out of this place uh, before the lease was even up. So Phantom Autoglass was my sub lessee. I've uh, recently just, uh, uh, the lease ran out. So it's great. It's no longer uh, mine. I'm no longer responsible, even though my insurance is still currently covered on there. Anyways, it was time to consolidate. So I moved into a warehouse, this warehouse, and said goodbye to the storage base uh, and the offsite containers that I previously had uh, to store all my inventory in. And it was about $1,700 a month to rent this place, $1,350 plus the extra occupancy fees. In season three, I made $188,000. Now I'm in this warehouse with the whole off season to strategize how I'm gonna kick the next season right in the big old behind. So I've been working on my website all the time. I've been adding descriptions, making it better so that I get better customers. You know, the better things look on your website, um, you know, the more convincing it is to customers. They've been coming in. They see I'm at a commercial location from the pictures on my Google page. You know, now I don't have to just rely on my website being the showroom, which is very good as well. But uh, so at this point, when I move into this place I can start using my buying power again I have enough inventory that filled up uh, this whole place in here um, that uh, the bookings can start snowballing so if I take a booking for something I actually own enough 
of that inventory that it can buy more of that inventory. So I started using that uh, to snowball my rentals, right? Or to buy something else. Say someone rented out, uh, you know, 200 fan back chairs. Well, all that money can be reinvested into another item, right? And so as long as I can pay the bills and I eat at the end of the day, things are starting to snowball. And as long as I have the room uh, to fit it in here, I jammed it in every nook and cranny. I had to reorganize this place like 20 times just uh, to get everything to fit in there. At this point, the money's coming in fast enough that I can also just add items up to my website and there was enough money coming in that if someone did end up booking that item, then I could just go out and buy it because there was that extra flux of cash. And then I don't have to buy certain items and I can test certain items out on the website uh, without fear of them never going out and them sitting. I just knew I needed to get into a place. I was busting at the seams. And so when I got in here, it just made the ball roll that much further. I mean, you have empty space, you wanna fill it with something and you can buy bigger things. Um, so it was absolutely fantastic. The extra loading bay and uh, right here without dirt getting all over my items helped me keep things cleaner. Um, I was able to put a pressure washer right at the door and clean things right outside the door. The water would just roll away. Absolutely fantastic. Now that I have a commercial space, um, I also started putting money into Google Ads. I put $10 a day and started making those AdWords work for me. So uh, Google Ads definitely works in our industry. It definitely works in our industry. So if you're putting that money in, um, you're definitely getting it back. It's not wasted money, especially if you're not at the top of the rankings, which at this time here, I wasn't at the top of any of the rankings. I had to work hard uh, to dominate the SEO in my industry for the Google 3 pack. Uh, which, you know, I've gotten into in lots of videos like this one right here. So when I was in here, this was also the point when I started working on PartyCAD. I figured out the program where I can make digital designs of tents and that was helping me secure bigger events. So when people asked for a quote, I could make a 3D design generated for them. They could envision the uh, event and that helped me secure lots of bookings. To this date, I still do CAD designs for uh, all of my customers that I have the time for or I feel it's relevant to uh, capture the booking. Also, now that I got to this size, uh, the phone calls were starting to be worthwhile to take. I wasn't saying no to every customer due to lack of inventory like I was previously because I was buying more inventory and I had more customers calling because of Google AdWords and it all just started snowballing. So while the snowballing's happening in my company, uh, my position in the company also started evolving. I was able to take the phone calls and let the guys do the labor they had been trained to do so that I can foster these clients to make sure that the right clients were getting the right service that they need so that the booking gets booked. All that you need to do is convince the customers that you're the right company for them. And if you're sitting in the labor seat, that's a harder task to do if you are doing two things at once. So I was able to evolve by putting myself up uh, into that position. At this point, I was able to grab the phones and do quotes quickly, um, but then I also integrated the online booking system. So I was grabbing phone calls, but the customers who wanted to just do an online booking, lots of those were popping up instantly because I mean, people aren't as scared of the internet. And so that really helped me uh, to lessen the workload, right? You know, 10 years ago, if you're starting a rental company, it just wasn't a thing. People wouldn't want to book online. Maybe they'd request a quote. I don't even know. Uh, I'm just part of the new age. So I should also mention, I'm still in this stage, by the way, but uh, I first realized it when I was in this place. Um, when you're a boss and you're taking the phone calls, there's just a, a moment of... Um, you do everything and you feel great. There's a moment where you can do something that the bigger businesses can't do. And that point is, is you go out on site and you're still uh, overseeing the installs. You're like the foreman and you're the office person. You know every part of the business. So you're able to explain to the customers, um, you know, better to make the sale. But also you're, if you're going out on location, you've got your phone with you, you've got your camera, you're able to video that stuff. Um, you know, the bigger companies, they don't can't send a videographer out to every event to capture these. Whereas we bring the drone out. Uh, I didn't have the drone at that time, but you know, bring the camera out and you could film the tent so that you have uh, better content for your website so that you can populate that so that people, um, you can really capture those bookings by uh, simply putting more content on the internet. So me as the owner, I just realized, you know, while I was in this space that, uh, 
that was a tool that I can use, you know, that I am a working owner, but also the photographer, I'm wearing all the hats, but I'm utilizing it too. You know, you can't just send your manager out and make him be the content manager and the guy. Like if you, if they don't own the business, they're not going to want to wear that many hats and do that many jobs unless you're paying them out the yin yin, out the butt. I still had to lay my staff off at the end of the season. I still had to say goodbye to my staff because uh, not enough winter work, enough to survive by myself and go through the winter months fine. I still had bookings, but I could execute it all myself. Um, and thank God I did because, um, you know, if I kept those guys around, yeah, I probably could have kept them around, but for what, to stand around so that I could pay them to keep them for the next season? No, it's too small, it's not time yet. And so what I did is through the whole winter, I would keep buying inventory with that money and doing the work myself because I could handle the job in the off season. Um, what did I buy? I bought three more 20 by 30 tents, uh, 20 by 20 to fill orders. Uh, and then this, at this point, it would allow me to secure 250 person events. So having that more uh, people gets more clients in a different tier. So that just means more money coming in. As you can see, things are just compounding and compounding and compounding now. Uh, so I couldn't buy any inventory anymore. This place was full. So I did the only logical thing that I knew in my head and I moved out of here. My lease wasn't even finished yet. I was only halfway into my lease, uh, not even halfway into my lease. So I moved out of here and I moved into my next warehouse, the one that I'm currently at right now. This is the current shop where I'm at, 306 Party Rentals. Uh, these are the current vehicles that I'm using. I've got a minivan, 14 foot box truck, 16 foot, uh, 15 passenger van that's been hollowed out and a six by 12 trailer. And yes, I also rent when needed. So now it takes me back here to the shop where we started this video. And now I do weekly vlogs. Every week I tell you about the progress, how much money I made, what I bought. Um, you know, update you for the week, what I'm doing so that you can grow with me. And you've got something to watch too, so it's great. So after this video is done, uh, I'll put a playlist down there and then I'll put, uh, I'll put some information that you can do and then you can just watch and hopefully I've gained you as a subscriber and uh, weekly you'll tune in with me for your vlogs. You'll comment, tell me what I'm doing wrong, what you're doing and uh, we'll just join this venture together because I'm only going up. Are you coming with me? Huh? You, who's coming with me? Who's coming with me? I know you're wondering, what am I looking forward to in the future? Well, in the future, I'm looking forward to uh, getting out of here after my lease is done. I've got 17 months left, so hopefully maybe the bank will give me some money and I'll be able to get my own warehouse and own my own little slice of heaven and stop giving my money to someone else. I don't have a yard here. I need something with a yard and uh, I just need more. I need dock height and grade height. This is grade here, this door. So if I'm thinking about bigger and bigger, bigger and better, this is what I need. You see this? I need bays. It's like your rentals are ready at bay one, two, three, four, five. Five bays, some are in, some are out. See this huge parking lot. You need to be able to stretch tents out, to do whatever to them, to you know set things up. You need outside space. And the fact that it's paved, paved is huge. You see this? There's a yard behind there. You need a yard to store things. Go this way, you've got a locked up area here. Oh, and you've got one other base so that you can have your delivery vehicles going out that way. So, uh, you know, you can segregate things. A whole upstairs floor full of offices. If you wanna grow big, you have to gain lots of inventory and then you have to start catering to caterers, wedding planners, small people who you can help grow and they need a space to call their office as well. And they're almost working for you. They're renting stuff out so you can give them a space to operate in and then they're in debt to you so they exclusively rent through you. You also need grade height loading doors. If you're loading the trailer, great at that door for going out. But if you're loading the box truck, you need something box truck height. You also need a showroom. A showroom uh, is what you need. So showroom there, maybe that's for caterers. A showroom right there, that's for, uh, you know, fluffy wedding stuff. A big building like this, I want this building. Um, and if I don't put this on my radar and talk about it on YouTube, then um, it's not gonna happen, right? I've made 
big dreams come true before. So a building like this is my big dream. So I have to move because I'm gonna outgrow my other space by the time my lease is done. I've got about 20 months. So something like this is on my radar. Thank you. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, you know what to do. Press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to subscribe or thank you for subscribing, shall I say. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. And as always, you stay classy.